A lot of your peers from the 90s are in the Hall of Fame. Mitch Richmond, Grant Hill, Chris Webber, Tim Hardaway, all mm -hmm. in the Hall of Fame. Is it's it time, it's time. It's to about, put the Rain Man time. in the mean? Hall of Fame? It's yeah. time. Well, I think so. You know, I've, I've always said that, um, you know, those first eight or nine years that I had was, uh, was, was pretty good, pretty solid. Mm -hmm. You know, pretty solid. And also, I will tell you this, man, I'm a six-time All-Star, so that's, you know, those six times, those six games that I started, you, you know who I had to beat out. You know, mm -hmm. that was Charles, and that's Carl Malone. That's mm -hmm. every year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty consistent basketball. Right. You know, I will say this, though. So, um, me going through some problems and stuff that I went through in my career also hurts you at the end. But I think uh, when you look at the good side of it and you compare the numbers and stuff, I'm right there with some of the best ones. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Would you mind opening up and, 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 and sharing and talking about them problems? We don't have to if you don't want to. But Well, I'm not afraid to talk okay. about it. I mean, obviously, I think when any time that you, uh, you go, your body shape goes from this to that and you gain weight mm -hmm. or you have some drug problems and any, any, mm -hmm. anything like that is always going to be highlighted. Mm hmm you know what I'm saying? So I understand those. you have those marks against you. But the dominance, I think, uh, of what I played with through those early years of my career, I think uh, it should definitely be mm -hmm. highlighted, without a doubt. I came from um, two parents that were functioning drug addicts. Mm -hmm. I grew up in it, mm -hmm. seen it, dad sold it. Mm -hmm. Were there times where you were out there at your best making all-star appearances and being great leading your team when you were on drugs? No, not necessarily on drugs. I believe... I believe when, when my drug when my drug issues probably came, man, it was more when things started to go sideways uh, okay. when I was having some problems with the organization. Okay. So I think, mm -hmm. um, you know, as far as I was concerned, um, when you put so much into the game of basketball, when you, when you say that you're going to become the best, when you say that you're going to become dominant, it takes a lot of time, man, Absolutely. a lot of effort. Right. And I don't think what people realize, I don't – well, and I don't even try to make them realize this, but I will just say this. At the time of playing basketball in the 90s, was a very physical sport. Man. Right. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't a weak man sport. Mm -hmm. Only the strong survived. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's, you, 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 you want to compete at, those best, at those best levels. So I don't think drugs really came into fact to me until probably when I started to lose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, when you start to lose, your life changed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So, uh, you know, the one thing, uh, and I tell you guys, it's the one thing that I kind of regret about back then is that I'll say this, is that, um, you know, playing with Gary Payton, we had this great friendship, this great camaraderie where we won so many games, winning 50, 60 games a year. Mm -hmm. You Sometimes when you start to look at things as far as it's financial, sometimes you put that ahead of what you have chemistry-wise. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, I, I tell Gary this all the time, if I could go back and change a few things, we would probably, we, both of us would probably work on being with each other, playing with each longer. other a little bit longer you guys than set, what we did. You guys Absolutely. set the bar. What's the story? I, so I, I did voiceovers for this show called... What's, uh, Real stories of basketball, mm -hmm. and it was when they brought old boy in that averaged like four points and two rebounds in. And came oh, McIlvain, yeah, McIlvain. Yeah. So I did That's the voiceover for that. See, you talked on it and everything. So right. I did the voiceover for that, and I did. Obviously, I was younger when that happened, so mm -hmm. I didn't really. I was like, damn, why would he leave? But I read how you know they came in for years. Don't know, like they came in and gave Jim McIlvain, someone who didn't play, didn't do anything, a bunch of money. Right. This dude led the team every in rebounds, scoring. To the to the playoffs to the and he was making more than Sean. So that's yeah. you at the time, right? So that yeah, yeah, and maybe some more things. But like I said, that's yeah. the kind of what I got but from. I, but I think you know, to me, it wasn't necessarily about the money. It's more about the respect. respect right? Come on, man! Like, come on, man! And it takes great it. effort. Absolutely, to with the best every day, Absolutely. every night. And when you do that consistently for year after year after you need year to be after rewarded year, for that. yeah, man, absolutely. I think. Um, and I'm just telling you this, I, when I look at it now, I look at it back and I'm probably, as a young man, you're going through that, you probably take it personally. Yeah. In life and in business, one of the things that you don't do is take things personally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once you take it personally, it's going to affect not only who you are, but also what you do. And I but I, but I say, I, with that. all due respect, it's hard not to. And I, in, in no way do I want people to make it think like you were mad about someone else getting money. That wasn't what I got from it. Not, what it was, was it was the respect factor. What you had accomplished with that team, you deserved more than what you were. Well, I think that's, <clears throat> man, I think that's what you do when you're right. a player. Come on, man. 
you, you you're working you're working for, for that. That's what for you it. those right. steps. Those are the things that you're working for. And um, and I was one of those guys who um, who who kind of went in there and was just like, hey, what do I need to do to become you know the best? What do I need to be do to become one of the highest paid? And who you know? And uh, I can remember the conversation. The general manager, <laughs> the general manager came to me. And uh, he was like, "Well, if you if you want to be the high, one of the highest paid, then all you gotta do is go out there and I'll play Michael Jordan." <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, well, well." A couple years later, we play in the championship, and uh, I look at it as an opportunity. That's an opportunity for me to shine, and it's also an opportunity for you to make more money. Mm -hmm. As they said, I mean, if I could outscore Michael Jordan in this series. Then, and also play well and help our team achieve what we're trying to achieve, then I'm going to put myself in a pretty good position. Mm -hmm. Well, I played well. I've done those little things. But when it came, when it came time for payday, mm -hmm. there was no phone call. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you lose the series, that's what they do to you sometimes, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, hey, you kind of forgot about that conversation beforehand. Right. Right. So, you know, I think, um, you know, and I say this, but as a young man, you, you sometimes uh, you take those things personal, without a doubt. Absolutely. Those same those same things that you take personal, you sometimes don't take personal. And that's kind of what makes you. That's what kind of drives you. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, there was things that I probably didn't take personal that drove me. But that one right there definitely hurt me. What well, What's the biggest misconception about Sean Kemp? Uh, biggest misconception is... Um, Have to be about uh would probably be about that or either about uh I guess with the drugs and the, the things of that session, uh, like I said, those things really didn't come in play, man, until a little bit later in the game. But I think um, the mis miscommunication that I think with the public was just me uh, wanting to have a personal relationship and not being broadcast with myself. Yeah, yeah. and I think that's what really hurt me when mm. you. And I just say this, man. When, at the time, as a young man, you want to protect not only your image, but kind of your life. Yeah. Those people want to get inside your life. Mm -hmm. They want to know more about you. I had that wall up. Mm -hmm. And when you put that wall up, it definitely hurts you. Mm -hmm. I realize that now.